Alright, welcome back cheese lovers. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use controller rumble for your games. And for my example, I obviously have a controller and uh, rumble helps, helps whatever game you're making feel more like alive because like the vibrations, for example, like if you're driving a car, that would be accurate to real life. If you're getting hit, just a, a bunch of things like that could improve the experience for people who use controllers and yeah with that let's just kind of get into how to do that so uh, i'm going to create a local script in starter gui you can put it in starter player scripts or starter character scripts so um mostly the main part the main service we're going to use for this is called haptic service so i'm going to define this local haptic service let me zoom in as well. Equals game get service, haptic service. And then what we're going to do is basically check to see if a gamepad is connected. And then what we have to do is define the gamepad that we want to use, the rumble motor. And I'll get more into that in a second. And then um, what amount of vibration and that's a number between zero and one i believe um the number zero to one is obviously kind of like a percentage so one is going to be the highest amount and zero is going to be the lowest and you also need user input service for this which i'm going to shorten to uis in the variable there so uh what we want to do is say if uis and um Obviously, you'd want to apply this when you're trying to use Rumble. I'll give you a more realistic example for something you're probably going to use in your game at the end, but I just want to show you how this works first. So if UIS, um, so we're going to use user input service, get gamepad connected. And for some reason, this doesn't seem to be in the autocomplete, but I believe this should work. And then for my example, I'm just going to do gamepad one, which would be the first gamepad you connect uh you might want to do some checking to see which gamepad is mainly used and then make that like a variable or something but uh we'll just do that and then we'll say then and the error goes away good um and then what you want to do is basically set the rumbling so this is where stuff actually starts happening so you'll say haptic service colon um set motor and then you need to give the user input type, the vibration motor, and uh, a couple other things. So let me actually open up vibration motor to show you the different choices we have for that. All right, so in vibration motor, you have large, small, left trigger, right trigger, left hand, right hand. And uh, with my pretty standard Xbox um, Series X slash S controller that I got, I don't have these last four, I only have large and small. Uh, that might be a feature for some controllers or planned for future controllers, something like that. So uh, what you need to do before doing this is make sure your motor that you're trying to vibrate is supported. And small is um, for more subtle things, large will have a larger, it'll feel like a lot more movement. And I know that's hard to describe because you also set the intensity, but um, if you test this out yourself, you're almost, you'll understand. So to try to prevent yourself from getting errors with this sort of thing, not try to use a vibration motor that doesn't exist for you, what you want to do is say if haptic service is motor supported, and then put in your user input type, that should be the same gamepad ID that you were checking for before, and then you want to put in a vibration motor, which is an E enough value. And then in our case, uh, you'll see these values are similar because they're the same thing. Large, small, all those six. And I'm going to check for small. And there we go. So if that's true, then... So if that's true, then we want to basically vibrate that motor. So we'll say enum.userInputType.gamepad1. So that's um, this is a set motor. And this is the gamepad we're trying to do. And then we'll say enum vibration motor small. Make sure this is the same as the one you're testing. Otherwise, you might have results you don't expect. And then you want to have how intensely the motor should vibrate. So in my case, I'll do a 0.5. And as I said, it's 0 to 1. 
And then, um, that's pretty much it. So we can join the game and see an effect. We should get, oh wait, not if there's an error. I was having errors and I realized that my uh, UIS or user input service auto corrected to something I didn't want. So it's game get service user input service. And now we should see a result. So, um, I don't know if you can hear that, but uh, something is definitely happening. It's uh, the small motor, so it's it feels like less. So we'll see how the table reacts and stuff. See, you'll see it moves a little. This is such a weird way to test it. Also, I'm not in frame anymore. Okay, so I'm gonna stop the game and then I'm gonna do the large and you'll notice a difference. So, say if the large exists, then vibrate the large. And this is still at 0.5, by the way. So let's put a camera on this. And you need to, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, so, so you could probably hear that. I hope you could hear that because that is pretty loud. <laughs> uh, but obviously it's not gonna be that loud if you're holding it in your hand. But I just wanted to sort of give a way to show you that those are two entirely different things, large and small motor. So um, next I'll bring up kind of a real use case. And this is what I'm doing for my game. So I have a module script. If you don't know what a module script, please go ahead and look at my video on module scripts. But they're basically places to hold functions, variables, other things like that. So I have module.controller rumble. And when I call this, I give my controller, my motor, the amount, and then the rumble time. Cause you'll notice when I was doing this, uh, it didn't stop. And that's because you have to do set motor and then basically set it to be zero uh, once you're done. So what you have to do is set it to rumble, then await the amount of time that you want it to rumble, and then set it back to zero. Hopefully that makes sense. So yeah, this is basically automatically set up from the information that I provide. So for example, it says if motor is supported, it gives the controller, which is a user input, the user ID or whatever. Uh, and then a motor, which is a vibration motor. User input type, that's what I meant to say. And yeah, then it basically, it just does that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the end of the video. I hope this helped. And uh, please share this with your friends if this was informative. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.